Now we're going to learn about the variables and literals. What does this mean in C language? So a name which was given to memory location, it's basically a variable. By mathematics, we know that variable can store values in it. Same thing as that. And literals are those is are basically values given to variables. Those are called literals. So there are specific rules for naming a variables. So rule for naming variables are a variable can have only alphabets, numbers and underscore. So a variable name cannot begin with a number. So we'll see this and if we write with number, begin variable name with number, it will give error. So it's defined that way only. It is preferred practice to begin variable names with lower case character. For example, age is preferred to write capital A G E. So it's more readable. So we'll be using camel case first variable name would start with a small case. And after that onwards, whatever the name next names will be there. So we'll be writing with the capital case. So we're going to see that in the Visual Studio code also. And whenever we are writing any variable name will not give space in it. So some suppose I write age number. So here between age number variable will not give any space. So we'll write together. So no white space is allowed. So we're going to see this thing also in the VS code. Now next thing we're going to see is a variable name cannot be a keyword. So keyword is that name. So which is already taken by the compiler. So here if I say int, it's a keyword. Int is a keyword which means it's an integer. When I say float, so float is a keyword for floating point means decimal points, right? So care string these are the keywords those are reserved word you cannot use the, those words as a variable name we want to see that thing also here i already told that int is a keyword and which denotes integer similarly so on so we'll be learning about data types and everything and i'll be telling we'll be discussing about keywords and all those things in details in data types so here variables can start with underscore however it is not considered to be a good practice so we said that variable name cannot start with a number it can it has to be start with letters or it can start with underscore but that's not a good practice and literals are data used for representing fixed value that i already explained it means what 1, 2.5, C, these are all the values that is going to be stored in a variable. So these are called literals. So here int is a data type, age is a variable name, this is assignment operator and 25 is the literal. So this whole statement is read that way. So we are going to learn about data type and assignment operator and everything we are going to learn about those things. Next, we're going to see is variable scope. So when we talk about variable scope, there we talk that our scope is a region of the program. And broadly speaking, there are three places where the various variables can be declared. Either we declare the variables inside a function or a block, which is called local variable. In the definition of a function parameter, which is called formal parameters and outside of the function which is called global variables either we define variable in three places inside the function inside the parenthesis that is we call this parameter and outside the function so these three things we're going to see again when we go forward with the vs code examples now we're going to talk about the types of variables. So variables are different types we can see in the presentation that it, it can be local variable, it can be global variable, it can be static variables, automatic vari variables and external variables. 
so we're going to see each by examples in the vs code i'm going to te like teach you about what is local variable what is global variable and all so we're going to discuss local variable and global variable in detail so on the basis of the scope there are two types of variable local variable and second is global variable so when i say local variable so it is defined inside a function or a code block so scope of these variables remain limited to the block in which they are declared what i mean by this is i'm going to take example that time you'll understand it means within the scope means within the parenthesis its validity remains within the parenthesis and when i say global variables declared outside the function or a block of code we can access these variables anywhere in the program after it is declared and next type of variable is you know static variables so static variables are defined using a static static keyword and scope depends upon the region where they are declared it can be local or it can be global so basic thing is we use the static keyword for declaring static variables similarly there is automatic variables so by default all the local variables are automatic variables scope is local and its default value is a garbage value and the last type of variables is external variables so can be shared between multiple c files scope is always global and declared using exter extern keyword so for a static variable declaring we use static keyword and for declaring external variable we use extern keyword so what is this keyword we already talked about keyword is that reserved word that is there in the compiler which you cannot name those variables you cannot create one variable with the name static and with the name extern so we will learn about data types and everything and we'll see that there also those are reserved keywords now we're going to jump to the vs code and we'll see what is variable scope we're going to learn about local variables and global variables in detail and i'm going to take few examples where it's going to give error and all those stuff so we're going to learn a lot of thing in the vs code so let's jump to vs code now we're going to see the examples of local variables and global variables and we're going to see how those are defined so for that what i'll create i'll click on this here new file and i'll create three local global dot c here we're going to write the template again that we used to write so we're going to see first for the local variable so local variable for that i have to include the header file hash #include stdio.h so this is the header file to in input output including so i included that and after that let's take one more function instead of main function we'll take main function and we'll take another function so how to create function right now you don't have to care about it because we're going to learn functions in detail i'll tell you that thing also so here what i'll do is i'll create one function and return type of that function will be writing as void and i'll be writing that function name as test this is how we define a function this is the basic template of a function with either return type function name and this round bracket and within this parenthesis we go to write the, write the definition of that function so let's suppose here i declare one variable that is integer a and let's give the value as 50 and one let's create one more variable as b and give the value let's say 67 okay so here a and b are local variable to the test function a and b are having scope within scope means this parenthesis scope means this parenthesis so a and b variables are having scope within this test function only these are not visible to main function 
so main function we going to write these are not going to be visible to that main function because it's valid inside this brackets only this parenthesis only if you try to access it will not give you the result so we're going to see that thing also so this is it and what i'll do is i'll write one printing function for this so that we can print the value also so for that what we use we use the keyword printf and i'll write and within the double quotes i'm going to write i'll i am going to give next line slash n it's going to the next line and i'll say values values of a is equals to we already know we use percentage d for integers we i already talked about that in the earlier videos percentage d and b equals to we are going to write again percentage d and in which variables it is stored it is stored in a comma b so this is how it is going to print so how it looks values then it will say a equals to 50 and b equals to 67 so percentage d is going to show show us it corresponds corresponds to 50 and 67 basically percentage d we use for the integers if it would have been float we could have used another thing if it would have been character we could have used percentage c similarly that i already told in the previous videos all right this is done now we going to write the main function so in in that main function we going to write at we going to create other variables so let's create the main function all right int main function okay we have created the main function and here we'll write let's declare more variables x equals to 89 and int y equals to let's say 56 so again here x and y are the local variables to main function here x and y variables are having scope within this main function scope means this parenthesis within this main main function right so these are not visible to the test function so this is not visible to test function because they are local to each other right now we are seeing example for local variables how to create local variables so this we created now we have to print in the similar fashion so what are you going to write we going to use the keyword printf and we going to write in double quotes we going to give slash n to the net next line it is going to print again we'll say values colon what is the variable name variable name is x I'm going to write x equals to it's a integer so we have to we have to use percentage d and y equals to again percentage d and it corresponds to variable x and y x comma y and at the last we going to use semicolon to end the whole statement now this is complete this is integer type main function so we have to return something so we'll write return 0 so that it says that execution of the code successfully now we didn't save this code so i have to save the code so i'll hit control s and i'll right click here and run the code so before running the code i'll just clear this terminal so i'll right clear here and i'll right click here and run the code after running the code you can see it is giving some values x is equals to 
okay it is giving some wrong values we have to see what wrong we are doing okay we found that here i have used this double quote at the end but i have to use till here this double quote because a or b are the variables that should not be included in this double quotes because that is going to be printed as it is so that's why it is taking garbage value and it is giving something output different output than what we have take, taken so here i have to give this double quote okay now these are independent now i'll hit control s and i'll right click here and i'll run the code after running the code you can see values it is giving x is equals to 89 and y is equals to 56 so okay x and y values are it's giving but it is not giving again the test this test functions values are not giving so what we didn't do is we didn't call this function so we're going to learn this thing again so this is what function declaration this is function definition but we didn't call this function so i have to call this function in the main function for calling this function i'll write test and i'll just simply call this now it should work so we're going to explain these things in very detail right now i have to show you the local variable that a b r its scope is valid till this parenthesis and x y are valid till this parenthesis that's why i have taken this different function name that is test now if i save this control s and i'll right click run the code now it should give the result you see values of x and y it's giving a and b are giving so here you can see a b cannot be access it cannot be accessed from this main function and x y cannot be accessed from this test function so this is what local variable mean also now i want to take example for global variable what does global variable mean i already talked about that so i'll take it in the next part so let's create another program for that so i'll create here i'll write as for local global one dot c so in this we're going to see the global variable how to declare variable globally so as we know the variables which are declared outside the function are known as global variables in c the scope of global variables will be throughout the program it means if we declare outside the program outside the function if we declare the variable name then it can be accessed from anywhere this is the global variable basically the lifetime of a global variable is throughout the program so let's see what i mean by these things so again we'll include the header file first so that is hash include stdio.h i have included the header file now what i'll do is i'll write i'll declare all those variables declaring means we are telling the compiler that this is the variable name we're going to use don't give error that is what declaration means and initialization means we're going to give the value to that variable so we're going to name the variable let's say we're going to name the variable as mn let's write integer m so here m is the variable name and it's of integer type so it's going to store integer in it let's store some value 38 now i can write in the next statement or i can give comma and i write by side also and i write let's say n equals to 78 so this is the whole statement it means m is a variable name n is also the variable name and m stores 38 and n stores 78 in the previous example i have taken in different as different statements if you see you in this statement what i'm doing is i'm taking in the whole in a single statement you can do this way also you have to use only comma here okay this is we are seeing for global variable so we're declaring outside the function so it can be accessed from anywhere now i'm going to 
declare one more variable that is a and we're going to initialize it with let's say 79 and comma we're going to write b variable variable name b and we're going to assign it to value let's say 84 so here equals to means assignment operator so we're going to learn about this in the later part of the video this is not equals to in mathematics we know this is equals to but in programming this is assignment operator this equals to sign is there okay this is done now what you're going to do is we're going to create that test function how to create we'll write return type and we'll write test so in this test function what we'll do is we'll di directly print those values so for that i'll write one print statement that is printf for that and in this i'll give next line to it and after that what i'll say is all variables are accessed from test function and i'll end the statement with semicolon it is very necessary otherwise it will give error now next printf statement we're going to write we're going to print the values so let's write one of the printf statement here so this is a output statement basically printf so i have to write printf all right now in this we'll write slash n we'll go to the next line and after that we'll again write values and with this values m we're going to access m and we're going to write percentage d it's an integer so i have to write percentage d you have to take care of this thing after that i'll give colon sign here then we'll access n then again we'll give what percentage d to get the access of n and I'll separate it with, by colon again and I'll write a equals to again percentage d because we are accessing that a variable also this is a m and a b are not written inside the scope of this test function this is the scope of this test function now what I have to write is I have written percentage d and I'll give colon here and we'll access b also and I'll give percentage d percentage d is necessary because that's an integer so I have to use this percentage d in the earlier classes I have already told that thing here I'll write all the variables name respectively what is written m and a and b so I'll write m comma n comma a comma b so this is how it's going to write at the last we're going to give semicolon so this is the test function is done now we're going to write the main function and in the main function we're going to access from the all the variables in the main function also so for that i'll write main and within the scope we're going to write everything what we written here so i'm i'm going to just copy these things and it will do our task i'll copy whole thing and i'll write it here instead of access from test function i'll writing main function and this is going to be remain same so if you see the difference in the local variable we were declaring a and b within the scope this is called scope and x and y were de defining within the scope but in global variable where we are declaring outside the function it means it can be accessed to every each and every function whoever wants to access it now it's a main function it's of integer type so i have to return something so i'll return zero here now i have to save the code i'll hit ctrl s and i'll hit click click here and i'll write clear so that i can clear the terminal I'll right click here, run the code and if you see values are getting 
printed. So variables access from main function are m equals to 38, m and a and b are getting printed. Okay, again test function values are not getting printed because I have to call this function again. So test, this is how we call the function. This is called as calling of function. So this is going to study, this thing we're going to study later that how to write a function, how to call a function, how to declare a function, how to initialize with the value. Everything we're going to learn about that. What is parameters, what is all arguments and everything. So now I'll hit control S and I'll right click here and run the code. Now if you see all variables access from main function it is printing, then it is printing variables access from the test function. So both getting values from here. So it can be accessed from everywhere. Now I'm going to talk about few few examples. There we're going to see that it is not working. So we're going to see those things, few examples we're going to see and we're going to learn that what mistakes are there in those codes. Alright.